So, and I brought this up before we left for break. And so I know no one probably remembers because this was over a week ago. You're going to want to memorize at least sine, cosine, and E for these. What we're going to do today is transform them. Okay, so like add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. So if you know basically like, in other words, the parent function ones, then they're easy to transform. I left a lot of space here because I think last year I made everyone like start at the very beginning and write out the whole pattern like on that warm up we just did. I want you guys to just end up knowing them. It's a whole lot easier that way. The way I remember them is sine is all the odd ones, like one, three, five, seven, cosine's all the even ones, and then they alternate. Okay, so that's how I remember them. So when you do sine, it's gonna start with X, X to the one, one is your first odd number. And then it would be minus X to the third over three factorial plus, and they usually ask for the first four non-zero ones. That's typically how this is worded. So what would the next one be, the next term? X to the fifth over five factorial and then minus X to the seventh over seven factorial plus dot, 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 now they usually ask for the first four non-zero ter terms and the general term. The general term can be difficult to write. First of all, this alternates. So you're gonna need a negative one to the N or a negative one to the N plus one. This is your zeroth term. That's how they do all of these. So the first one is actually zero. And then this is the first term, second term, third term. Here's how I have found is the easiest way to do this, like in my mind, and this is kind of however your brain thinks kind of thing. But what I'll do is off to the side, I'll write zero, one, two, three. So for the zeros term, I want the power to be one. For the next term, I want the power to be three and then five and then seven. And that just helps me mentally go, okay, what do I need to do to match them up? Now, I want it to be negative one to the n, because if I start with zero, if you plug in zero, that'll make this positive, and the zero term is positive. If you plug in a one, this will be negative. Your next term is, are you following me there? If it was the other way around, you would just put an n plus one, and that would make it be the other way. All right, so then we have x to what power? I want you to think about it. If you plug in zero, you want to be able to get one. If you plug in one, you want to get three. If you plug in, basically, these are your inputs and these are your outputs. And you're trying to come up with a function that if you plug in this, you'll get this. Good. I'm going to write 2n plus one, though. You double it and then add one. That's hard. It is hard. It's just difficult double it and then add one. And then in the denominator, you want it to match, but be a factorial. Like if it's three, it's three. If it's five, it's five. If it's seven, it's seven. So it's going to be two N plus one factorial. Now for number two, so I had us write out, that's basically the quote unquote parent function. That's like the in general one. Now we're going to transform them. Do you see instead of sine of X, how this is sine of X squared? So instead of this, you're going to take all of this and plug in an x squared. Wherever there's an x, you're going to replace it with an x squared. It's really just algebra. It's not even calculus. It's, actually, this isn't even really calculus either. It's memorization. Um, you're going to take the x's and replace them with an x squared. So your first term would just be x squared minus, all right, now for this one, if you take X and replace it with X squared, you would have X squared to the third. That would give you X to the sixth. Good, good algebra. Over three factorial, that's not gonna change. Plus, now if you replace this X with X squared, it would be X squared to the fifth. So that would be X to the 10th, good. Over five factorial minus, and then what would the next one be? Good. X to the 14th over seven factorial plus dot, 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 plus, and now we got to do this again. So it's still going to be negative one to the N. And the denominators didn't change. Do you see how those are all still the same? So it'll still be 2N plus one factorial. So like the, the alternating of it didn't change and the denominators didn't change. We just have to change this part. So again, the first term is actually the zero term. And again, you can think through this however you want, but this is what helps me. I'll write out zero, one, two, three. 
And then what I want the powers to be, which is 2, 6, 10, 14. So you need to come up with a function. It'll be a linear function that if you plug in 0, you get 2. If you plug in 1, you get 6. If you plug in 2, you get 10. And that's hard, but take a minute and think about it. Like, what do we want? We want this to be x to the what? You have to come up with some sort of formula that'll make that be true. Good. Oh, you're good at those. So you times it by four and then add two. No, I understand. He did that quick. Oh, yeah. So, so you just have a lot of practice with them. Okay, so for the next one, so for cosine, again, I left a lot of space here because last year I just made my students do it from scratch. I'm past that. I want you guys to just memorize them. It's the same thing. It's going to alternate, but you're going to do all the even ones. So the first one's one. It starts with like x to the nothing. And then it would be minus x squared over 2 factorial. And then plus, what would the next one be? 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And then we've got to do this again. So it'll be negative 1 to the n. And again, off to the side, I'll just usually write 0, 1, 2, 3. Again, the first term is actually considered the zeroth term. And then what I want them to come out to be. So the first one's x to the nothing. And then I've got 2, 4, 6. This one's not quite as bad. Maybe let everybody else try to come up with it. 2n, good. You're just doubling all of them. So x to the 2n, and then on the bottom, 2n factorial. Yeah, that one's a little bit easier for all the even ones. So then when you go to transform it, see how this one's cosine of square root of x? Everywhere there's an x, you're going to replace it with square root of x, okay? So for the first one, there's not an x there at all. That's just going to stay 1 minus. Now, if you plug square root of x in for x, what's going to happen to the square root and the squared? Yeah, so it'll just be x over 2 factorial. Plus, now here I would think of it this way. A square root means a power of a half. It's really x to the one half. So if you put an x to the one half in there, half of four is two. Denominator doesn't change. And then minus, what would the next one be? x cubed, again, denominator doesn't change. And then we're going to do this again. So the alternating feature didn't change. You're going to keep that negative 1 to the n. The denominators didn't change. So that's still 2n factorial. I can write it out off to the side, but this one's actually not too bad because you want the 0th one to be 0 and the first one to be 1 and the second one to be 2. Oh, and so it's just x to the n. That's hard, though, in my opinion, being able to write out the general form. But look, if you have these memorized, when you go to transform them, it's not so bad. You don't have to like start from scratch. Like I made everybody do last year. I must have just been thinking evil thoughts. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, e to the x. That one doesn't alternate and it doesn't skip any. You just get everything. So it's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. The reason you get everything is because what's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. Do you remember when I made you do that one by hand and it just turned out to be everything? Like, But I want you to have these basic ones memorized because then when you go to um, transform them, it's not so bad. So what would be the general form for this? I don't need a negative 1 to the n or anything in there because it's not going to alternate. Over and... Perfect. All right, so this says use a power series, which is the things that we've just been doing, this whole, like all these patterns, to approximate this. I'm going to rewrite it as integral 0 to 1. And I have e to the x written right above here. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with a negative x squared. Do you see that? 
So wherever there's an X, you're going to replace it with a negative X squared. That'll be our power series, all right? So one is just going to stay one. If I replace X with negative X squared, all right, that'll be minus X squared. If I replace this X with negative X squared, first of all, when you square something negative, it's going to turn positive. And X squared squared would be X to the fourth. And I'm also going to evaluate this because we're going to do an antiderivative. So that would just be two. So one half X to the fourth. Now the next one's going to be negative. This is going to alternate because if you take something that's negative to an odd power, it's going to be negative. All right. So it'll be subtraction. X squared to the third. The X to the sixth. And do you remember what three factorial is? Three times two times one. Good. So it'll be one six X to the six. And then we're going to do one more. It'll be plus. Because when you take something to an even power, it's going to turn positive. X squared to the fourth. X to the eighth. And do you remember what four factorial is? Four times three times two times one. 24. One twenty-fourth. I think that's all the further we needed to go. Let me see if you need one more on here to go far enough. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Now it would be plus dot, dot, dot DX. Like it's going to go on forever, but we only need to get with an error less than 0 0.1. I'm stopping us there because I know how far we need to go. You would need to keep going until you got your error less than 0 0.1. Let's real quick. Remember how we did the error and you guys all nailed this question on that test. So don't let me down. Your error is less than or equal to like the next, okay, but we don't know which one that is. You need to keep going until you get one that's smaller than this. And that's what the calculator is for. Okay, but it's always less than like the N plus once, like the next one. All right, so now we're going to do an antiderivative. Antiderivative of just one, the X minus antiderivative for, we're actually doing calculus now. It's actually an antiderivative. Hold on one second though, go ahead. Um, so you know the negative X squared is not Oh, yes, right here. What the negative x So, and that's another filled with good questions today. You're replacing x with the entirety of negative x squared. So, like, for example, with this term, it became negative x squared squared over 2 factorial. And for this one, it became negative x squared to the third over three factorial. It's this thing in entirety is replacing the x. I feel like you're right. They should have maybe put some parentheses around that, but it's the whole thing. Okay. Antiderivative for this term, what would that give us? One third x cubed. Now for this one, it would be one fifth x to the fifth. But there's already a one half there, so it would be one tenth x to the fifth. Now this would be one seventh x to the seventh, but there's already a one sixth there, so what? Oh, good one forty second, one forty tooth. I don't know x to the seventh. Now we'll probably need a calculator for this one. It should be one ninth x to the ninth, but there's already a twenty four there, so. That'll be one over 216 X to the ninth. And then dot, dot, dot. Again, I stopped you, but you wouldn't know how far you needed to go until you did this. And it'll be such that zero to one. It's upper boundary minus lower boundary, but really you just need to plug in one because if you plug in zero, they're all gonna be zero. So let's plug in one and see what we get. This would be one minus a third plus a 10th minus a 42nd plus a 216th. Now let me show you in the calculator. If you do one over 42, do you see how it comes out to 0 0.02? Is that smaller than 0 0.01? No. So I'm going to the next one. If I do one over 216, is this, can you guys see it okay? Is this smaller than 0 0.01? Yes. So we can stop here and that's our answer. So whatever this equals, that's your answer because the next term is smaller than the error that you want.
Do you want me to type that in and give us a nice, neat answer? That seemed like that was bothering you guys. Here, we'll type it in. One minus a third plus a tenth minus one over 42. 26 over 35. If you want a nice, neat answer, that's the like final answer. Cool. So the takeaway is the error has to be smaller than the next term. So you have to keep going until you get an error smaller than that. All right, given this, find an expression for f of x. It comes from one of these. Just by glancing at this real quick and then up there, which one of the three got transformed? Sorry. Good. It's going to be something times sine. How did we manipulate sign. It's like instead of being given the transformation and finding the answer, it's like you have the answer and you want the questions, like you have to go backwards. What did we do to sign? We took sine of x and multiplied it by what? Like we took that and multiplied it by what in order? Good. Why is it x squared? Yep, too higher. This is the answer. Now, I took a picture of the textbook and just copied this here. It's not super great, but you can find it in the textbook if you want. These are the ones I think you should memorize is E, sine, and cosine. But there are other ones there that are good, like LN isn't a bad one to know. Um, arc tangent sometimes shows up because it's a real simple one. Um, they're there for your viewing pleasure, but I need you to know E, sine, and cosine. Those are the ones I have memorized, but there, there you go. All right, we're just going to try a couple more of these. Write out the first four non-zero terms and the general term. So you're going to look at e to the x, which I have up here for you. Everywhere there's an x, you're going to replace it with 4x. OK, so looking at this. Well, the first term is just 1. So it would just be 1 plus 4x, good, plus good, plus 4x cubed over 3 factorial. And you could reduce that down if you wanted to. It's not necessary, though, so I wouldn't. So that's your first four non-zero terms. Now you need the general term. Nothing alternates, so you don't need a negative one or anything. Your denominator is still just n factorial because that didn't get changed. Um, what would you have in the numerator? It would be 4x to the n. Yep, good. So for number two, you're taking e to the x and you're multiplying every term by an x. So you're basically just multiplying an x through that. So again, if you know these, getting the transformations is fairly simple. It's just algebra. So if you multiply an x through there, just the first four, what would you get? Good. Plus. Good. Plus. Good. Plus x to the fourth, perfect. Uh, it's x to the first, or just x. You're taking an x and distributing it to each of these. So x times 1 would just give you x. x times x would give you x squared. But e to the x is 0. So e to the x is this. And we're multiplying an x to each one of those terms. So the difference between these is the 4x is like inside the function. The 4x is taking the place of x. So for this one, everywhere there's an x, you're replacing it with 4x because it's inside. This is just x times the function. So you're just taking each term and distributing an x through it. Or you're multiplying it. Yeah. I think what's bothering you is you're still thinking of e to the x like a function. We're writing e to the x as a power series. Do you remember when I showed you those graphs and we had like a tangent line and I was like, well, this is linear, it's not very good. But then when we did it to the second, it got closer and the third, it got closer and the fourth, it got closer. And if you take it out forever, it represents the actual function. I remember like heads are nodding a little bit. This is e to the x. This is a representation of what e to the x is. So when it says x times e to the x, you're just multiplying x to each one of those terms. 
it's very difficult concept for us to grasp as human beings because we can't handle infinity and that's not an insult like our brains just won't do it so you have to like think about it but not too hard yes but we're not plugging in any values here So like e to the x is one and then x to zero times that x is all these stuff. No, it's one times x. You do the e to whatever and get one, and then you're multiplying it by an x. So one times x so gives you x. Yes. I mean they're it's the same variable. I guess an order of operations thing, you're doing e to the x first, getting one, then multiplying it by an x. So exponent first, then multiply. Does that sit better? Okay, so what is the zero to plug in? You're not plugging in to get, which they're generally putting all the way over there. Just plugging in over there. You're not really plugging in anything. It's just centered at zero. I'm gonna have to move this forward, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I want you to have time here at the end. I know you'll have flex, but I'm nervous about doing this next one because this next one's actually not one of those ones that's up there. I want to see if anyone recognizes the format of this one. It's not sine, cosine, or e. It's a different type of series. No, it's geometric. Good, but I think you remember geometric because you brought up P series. That's another good thing to remember. It's geometric. What's A? This is what's A and what's R. Oh, or, oh, yeah, sorry, I got distracted up here and we didn't finish the thing. Um, this would be, gosh, now I'm totally messed up here. Uh, in the denominator, it would be n factorial. In the numerator, it would be x to the n plus one. Why was it a plus one? Like, why did we have to add one? When you multiplied an x through, you now have one more than you had before. All right, so a for this one is two. R is x squared. Remember, it's a over one minus r. So when you write out your terms, the first term's two, and then you just keep multiplying by an x squared. So two times x squared is just two x squared. And then if you multiply by an x squared again, fourth, good. And then two x to the sixth and so on and so forth. So the general form would be two x to the what? Now, if you wanna write this off to the side, if that helps you, again, the first term is the zeroth term. You want your exponents to be zero, two, four, six. So two n, sorry, you said it so fast. You see, the more of those you practice, the better you're gonna get at it. Now, this one's also sort of an order of operations thing. I'm hoping after I do this one, maybe it'll like settle in better for us. You would do the minus one first. Do you see how like you would do the numerator first and then divide by two? Okay, so watch me point to this. Do you see how this is your cosine? This is a representation of cosine. If you take it out infinitely, it is cosine. It is perfect. Watch me do this. If you subtract one from this, you get that. Cool? I just took off the one. Now I'm going to take what's left and divide it all by x. So if I take this term and divide by an x, it will be negative x over 2 factorial. Basically, they're all going to be 1 less, all right? Plus, and then what would the next one be? You divide by x. x cubed over 4 factorial. And then minus x to the fifth over six factorial. And then plus, now the next one's not up there, but look at the pattern we have so far. What's the next one going to be? So seventh over, good. And then we have to write the in general term. So you're going to have negative one. This time it's going to be n plus one. Why is that? You started with the negative instead of starting with the positive. All right, now for the numerators, I'm going to write out zero, one, two, three. I want the first one to be a one. I want the second one to be a three. 
and then a five, and then a seven. So looking at those, I need a formula where if I plug in zero, I get one. If I plug in one, I get three. I'm just looking at the numerators right now. 2n plus 1. So x to the power 2n plus 1. Now, do you see how on the numerator it's a 1, denominator it's a 2 factorial? This is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8. Do you see how it's only 1 more? So instead of 2n plus 1, it'll be 2n plus 2 factorial. These last ones, we're not going to write out the general formula because it's just really awful. Okay, so we're just going to take these and add them together. Let me put this one back in here so it's not the What was it, sine and e? All right, we're just going to add them together. You ready? Now, you need the terms to go in order. So you're going to start with whatever is the lowest power. So look at sine, look at e. Do you see how the one would come first? You have to imagine all of this plus all of this. So the one would come first. So one is your first term. Now, still looking at these two. Do you see how this one has an x and this one has an x? So together, that would be 2x. It's literally just algebra, but you have to look through all of that, which is a mess, all right? So we're up to here. Now we want something squared. So x squared over 2 factorial. All right, so now we're up to here. Now I want something to the third. Oh my gosh, what do you notice? This is actually kind of cool that this happened. It kind of makes me know. Do you see how those two cancel? All right, so those are gone. Now I want something to the fourth. So x to the fourth over four factorial. I'm actually not sure how you would even write a general formula for that. Um, because there's not a true pattern anymore, like the threes canceled out. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Now we're gonna multiply. You have to go further than you think you're gonna need to because some things might cancel. Okay. So I'm gonna go one term further. Like it says right out the first four non-zero terms. I'm gonna go out to the fifth power because like something is probably gonna actually something does cancel. I'll just give you a heads up. So we're gonna take e times sine of x. So you're taking all of this multiplied by all of this. You can't do it forever, okay? But if we want the first four, I'm gonna go to the fifth power. Does this make sense? Do you remember once where we multiplied before and it said, do a, a second degree and we distributed until we got to a second degree and then we stopped, we didn't go any further? Okay, so this is, what's the first four? I'm gonna go to the fifth power. All right, so I'm gonna take this X and distribute it through here until I get to the fifth power. I'm going to take this x, distribute it. It's just a bunch of algebra. If I take x and distribute it through here, what's that going to give me? Take an x, distribute it through there. Good. And I'm going to start all the way over to the left because this is going to be big. x plus x squared plus x to the third over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over four factorial. And you could go for it, you could keep going forever and ever and sit here until end of days, okay? But again, since we weren't want the first four terms, I'm gonna go to the fifth power because something's probably gonna cancel. And so you wanna go a little bit further than you actually need. So what we did is we took this x, distributed it through here. Don't go to sleep on me yet, we're almost done. Now I'm gonna take this negative x to the third over three factorial and distribute it through here. Fine, right? We haven't fun yet? Algebra. Okay, so if you take negative x cubed over 3 factorial times 1, that would just be negative x cubed over 3 factorial, right? Now you're going to take it times x. So it'll be negative x to the fourth over 3 factorial. And again, I want to go at least to the fifth. So I'm going to take it times this one. Oh, wait. This one times this one. So that would be negative x to the fifth over three factorial times two factorial. Three factorial is six, two factorial is two, so six times two would be 12. We recap so far, we took the x and distributed it, we took the second term there and distributed it, 
Now we're going to take this one and distribute it as a heads up. Then after that, we'll be done. Okay, we can put the light things together. So distribute it to the one. That's just going to be x to the fifth over five factorial. Distribute it to the x. What would that give you? And we don't need to go to the sixth. So actually, now we're done. We went far enough. So now you have to look through all this and do the like terms. Does anything go with the x? Yes. Like we have another just an x. Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, so just x. And I'm going to cross them off as I go. All right, do we see another x squared anywhere? No, so just plus x squared. And again, I'm crossing them off as I go. Now the x to the thirds. Do you see how we have these two? This one would be a half. This one would be minus a sixth. So I'm just going to write off to the side there. A half minus a sixth. That would be three sixths minus one sixth, two sixths. So good. A third x to the third. And I'm going to cross those off. Now I'm looking to the fourth. What happens to these ones that are to the fourth? And that's why we needed to go to the fifth power. You want to go a little bit further than you think you need to do in case something cancels. So those are gone. And then these are all the ones to the fifth. I'll probably end up using the calculator here for these fractions. Four factorial is 24. So that's 1 24th minus 1 12th plus, oh, does anyone remember five factorial? If you don't, that's fine. I'm going to stick it in the calculator. Yeah, it's 120. I only memorize up to five. I don't know what it is above that. And if you stick that in the calculator, let me just type that in real quick. 124th uh, minus 112th plus 1 120th is negative 130th x to the fifth. So again, you need to go a little further than you think you have to in case if something cancels out. 